Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more Slay the Spire. So, we're back on our ironclad run. We're now on the second floor. So, I just wanted to mention before we get into this particular round, I know the previous episode ran on a bit long. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that anybody who wanted to get into this game knew exactly how the mechanics work. So, I took a little bit more of a tutorial approach and. It ended up making the run last a lot longer than it usually would. Usually the first floor lasts about 25 minutes, if that. So, yeah, in future, uh, I'm going to be going less tutorialized on that kind of thing. Uh, so hopefully we should get through runs a lot quicker. But it's still going to be like a floor per episode kind of thing. But they'll vary and be shorter in time overall. So, anyway, how are we going to pursue this one? Well... We don't have any elite synergies, but we still want to play two. So I think we want to hit this line here at some point. Yes. So whatever path we take, we need to hit these two elites here. Hitting your elites is always, always a good idea. Well, actually, we could take this path here as well. So that's not necessarily the case. In fact, we could take any path we want, so... Uh, it's how we want to do it. I think we want a rest right before the elite just in case this one's full combat This one's full combat, so we'll take this path Yeah, I'm gonna uh, for this episode. I'm just gonna try take a uh, less of a tutorialized view on the game um, And it's gonna probably go a lot quicker 69 <laughs> So this guy's gonna hit us for 10 and he's gonna buff at the same time. He's got plated armor which means he blocks 14 points every single turn, but if I hit him, uh, his life total directly, he loses one point for the next round. So, what we could do, this wouldn't do anything because he's got all the block in the world. Do a strength potion, I suppose. I kind of want to block. You know what, let's demon form, defend, block half of the attack. Gain some strength for next round. It means that we can get through his armor pretty much most turns, I would imagine. So the buff was actually the healed, so he's done absolutely nothing there. He's going to hit us for 12. We can bash. The vulnerable applies no matter whether or not we hit or not. So let's take that down. Then we're going to do a free drop kick. Hits life total. Plated armor goes to 13. Block 10 of that 12. So we can Iron Wave down to 12, and then... Actually, we've got Defend Plus, haven't we? Because we transformed a card. I've actually left this a day before um, I did the next episode, so... I'm going to have to reacquaint myself with the the deck strategy. I'm pretty sure I know what it is, though. Uh, right, let's go Battle Trance. Not drawing any more cards. We can heal with Reaper for 8, but we have to take his armor off first in order to do that. So we can hit him for 19, which works quite well. Mm. Can we... That's 12 damage, actually. It's a shame we're not lower on life, because we're not actually going to get full use out of that Reaper. So I suppose we could <sighs> block a little bit of it, and then just double strike, I think. And he's most likely just dead next turn. We gain two more strength next turn. So unless we hit like block after block, which we didn't, then we're all good. So we've got a bash here, which means this is a free drop kick and he's dead. Good. Alright, back up to 68. Uh, let's see. Cleave is good, especially upgraded. Don't like Corruption all that much. There's a build around that card, but we are not that build. I'm going to take Cleave Plus. Uh, I will take the question mark at this point. Match and keep. A gremlin is madly shuffling cards on the table. This monster seems to be a harmless one. You approach him out of curiosity. Twelve cards. Match them and to keep them. Five tries, no do-overs. Are you ready? Let's start. Okay, so we've got Parasite. We don't want that. There's a Bash. We wouldn't mind getting a Bash. Sword, Boomerang, and a Blind. Blash, Sword, 
Bash saw boomerang blind. We got dark embrace. Okay. Nah, not too happy about that. Second wind. <laughs> I don't really even want this, to be honest. Well, there's a blind. Apply too weak for free. Do we want that? We potentially get a bash, a sword boomerang. I wouldn't mind the sword boomerang. Blind is guaranteed. If we hit... Alright, we'll take the bash. Okay. Two bashes is okay if we're going vulnerable strategies, which we kind of are. We've got... Uh, I think we've only got the one drop kick here. We'd like another one, preferably, but can't always get what we want. Let's go question mark route. I like this side of it. Vampires? Navigating an unlit street, you, you come across several hooded figures in the midst of some dark ritual. As you approach, they turn to you in eerie unison. The tallest among them bears fang teeth and extends a long, pale hand towards you. Join us, brother, and feel the warmth of the spire. So, if we accept, he removes all strikes and then replaces them with bites. So they deal 7 damage and heal for 2 HP, but we lose 30% of our max HP. Takes one of our upgraded strikes as well. Hmm. I don't think we take that. It's an upgrade for three of them, sure, but we lose max HP. And I'd prefer to have a lot of max HP for things like Reaper. So we can gain a ton of life if we, like, stack demon form in a boss fight, that kind of thing. Really don't like this card in our deck. Yeah, I'm going to refuse it. You step back and raise your weapon in defiance. The tall figure sighs very well. The entire group of hooded figures morph into a thick black fog that flows away from you. You're alone once more. It's probably a run for that um, that event, like a, a life drain kind of thing. There's like a, a lot of cards where you... Oh, we needed the golden idol. We didn't get it. We can lose 20 HP to gain 5 max HP, or gain a decay. We don't have any ways of getting rid of that other than the shop. I'm going to lose 20 HP and gain some max HP shot. You stand up on the altar and cut your wrists. As the blood spills out in sacrifice, the arms of the statue reach out and close around your eyes. Everything goes dark. You wake up a short time later, feeling a new potential surging through you. Alright, we got to fight, then we can rest if we want to. Ooh. I think you're fine, actually. I'm ooing for the sake of it. Because we can apply vulnerable. So... He's planning on applying a negative effect to us, but my memory serves, he's only applying an effect 4 damage or 7 damage. It's a little bit more and we heal. Why not? He's only applying an effect that uh, matters with skills, I believe. Or is it non-attack cards? Let's find out. Hex. Whenever you play a non-attack card, shuffle one dazed into your draw pile. Okay. We can deal a lot of damage here, and we shall. I think I'm not going to take advantage of the bash. Because we could do 10, plus that, plus that, plus that. We're sacrificing 12 damage, 9. Hmm. Yeah, it just works out better this way, I think. Although we do lose the vulnerable... Which, if we get a drop kick, is a free attack. Sure, you know what? Hedge our bets so we'll draw. Drop kick. And we don't need to block, so let's just go most power possible. Half his health. Wonderful. Hex is not really affecting us. The other character you can play as is very skill based quite a lot of the time. And we did draw our drop kick, so that's very good. He did weaken us, though, so I'm very annoyed by that. Okay, it hits us for 13. So, a free drop kick. Might as well. Battle trance, might as well. Oh no, we might as well not. We've just shuffled the days into our deck. So, this is unplayable, and then if it's in our hand at the end of the turn, it just gets exhausted. It means that the five cards we draw, there's a chance that one of them is going to be terrible, which guaranteed next turn is going to be true. Although, it does synergize with our Dark Embrace. 
Right, can we deal 39 here? If we deal 6 with the flame barrier, Sean, take no damage. Twin strike? Yes. And just a normal strike. Get him close to death. Yeah, so as he takes 6. The reason why I went flame barrier is because that 6 damage isn't actually applied or affected by the weakened, so... Oh, there's our dazed. Ugh. Alright, well. We've got you anyway, I'm pretty sure. Nope, not quite. God damn it. Oh, that's real bad. He's hitting us for 31. Let's use the draw potion. There you go. Woo, dear. Never forget about your potions, and it's a good job we did use it as well, because we just got a new one. Whirlwind, spend all energy, deal 5 damage to all enemies X times. It's really good. But so's an iron wave. Ah. We don't have any energy generation as such. So this would be like a take your entire turn out kind of spell. I'm going to go with iron wave. I think it works with our strategy a little bit. 65 out of 85. I think I'm confident enough that we can smith. Let me just check our map again. Uh, this would be the issue. So essentially, there's between this elite fight and the next, we don't have a campfire. So we might die here if this is not an elite we enjoy that suits us. Ah, we go up to full if a rest. No, let's let's smith. We can go what? Other bash. We could upgrade a bash, maybe we could upgrade an iron wave. Demon form gives us three strength a turn. That's okay. I'm not fussed about Reaper Plus if we do go demon form. Cause we'll gain that in one single turn off of demon form. Battle Trance does four cards. Yeah, let's do Demon Form. We've got we start the game every round with four energy, so if we, it's in our opening hand, we can always. Oh, this one's a tough one. Gain two energy, so we can give a Strength Potion for this. I think we will. And oops, didn't mean to do that. Well. I guess we're focusing fire on you, blocking a little bit of damage. Want to get as many people off the board as possible, but these ones are a little bit eek. So he's going to add some unplayable wounds to our deck. Flame barrier is pretty cool. And in fact, it will deal a lot of damage. Let's go battle trance first. Oh, we've got demon form. Uh, I don't know if I can play it this turn. The 16 block on the other hand, plus the cleave and the iron wave seems like the better play. So we're dealing 6 to you. So is there... We can't quite get you where we want you, but we can get you to... We can get to you to a point where we can kill you next turn. Or we could just kill you now. And block all of the damage. Yeah, sure. End the turn. Attack us for 15, take 6. We take no damage. So as they attack us, they're making us vulnerable and adding wounds to our deck, which really hurts our... Our deck size and adds a lot of variance. So, let's bash you. I'll see if I can try kill you this turn. Free drop kick then. A Reaper's really good. That's 12 life we gain back on a Reaper. But then we lose 10. Hmm. It's 13 damage. This isn't actually uh, as much as I think. Uh, it's actually slightly more than I think it is because we get extra damage on that vulnerability. 
I'm going to Reaper. Give him 15. Take 10. So we netted 5. I suppose I could have used my energy potion there, actually. Oh, now I'm thinking that I should have, because he's just applied Entangle, which means we can't play attacks this turn. But we've played Flame Barrier, so we got the perfect card. Flame Barrier Pass. Hit you for six, you're dead next turn. So this went actually quite well, I would say. I'm confident this, uh, this particular battle is over right now. Especially since we're going to cleave, kill you, and hit you, and then finish you off. We get a trinket because it was an elite, so we got the Tory. Whenever you would receive five or less unblocked damage, reduce it to one instead. Okay. Oh, flex. Yes, do love flex. I think that's the card I'm going to take. Those are the cards that I was looking for uh, pretty much early in the run. Okay, these guys are interesting. Our hand is very much not interesting. Okay, so it's going to be block... Block, block, probably hit. I want to take you out because you do a, a horrible little buff later. You can probably guess that this is the healer and this is the tank. They uh, they act quite, quite in that manner. I'm just going to block as much as possible and strike, I think. Take out the mystic. If we can help it. Ooh, a flex. Okay, so he's going to block this turn, and you're going to apply a buff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flex for free, gain two strength, but I lose it at the end of the turn. It's fine. We just do increased damage here. So 10, apply vulnerable. And... Just point. Do I want the metallicize? No, I want, I want to focus damage on you, I think. And our strength goes away. Because you're going to block for the mage, and then the mage is going to apply a really horrible buff. I don't think I can deal 32 to you. I can flame barrier to block all of your damage and bash you. That's possible. Could also cleave twin strike, actually. Let's cleave. Can I deal 17 damage? That's 14. I think the buff is only a strength up. I also really want to block this damage here as well. So, oh, you've applied Frail to us, so we only block 12 instead of the 16. I think I'm going to Flame Barrier so that I deal damage to you nonetheless. And then we want... I'll make use of the Vulnerable. You're dead next turn. We just got this guy to deal with then. Oh god, that's that's real bad. We also used Tori there as well because because um, he didn't actually deal more than five damage. We only took one there, which is real good. Okay, nineteen damage to you. Let's battle trance. Demon form's real good, especially if we can get Reaper to come back around. That's the problem with Demon form, and why I think it's a little overrated, because it just takes a lot of setup, and this is... I well, suppose we could Energy Potion. Yeah, let's Energy Potion, so we've got six energy now. We can Demon form, set that up and make sure that we hurt them a lot next time. Save the Reaper for hopefully when it comes back around then. We want Cleave. And I need to deal 12 damage to you, because I think you're going to heal. I'm still going to take that 14. I think it's worth it though. Because if you're potentially healing, then we make the round go on a lot longer than it should. We still block 7 of the 14. So it's not all bad. Okay. 
And we gain three strength next turn, so we can hit for a hell of a lot more. Eight three times. Well, that's real bad. So, block as much as possible. Cleave you. You're not vulnerable, so... This is better. Alright. I think we take one on the second hit, though. Yes. So we took nine there. Because we didn't take damage... We took damage through the block. We actually blocked um, on that second attack. Less than... We took less than five, so... Counts like that. Can we kill you? I think we can absolutely kill the crap out of you here. Yeah. Okay. And even if we didn't, we had a ton of block. A swift potion for drawing three cards. A disarm is okay. Body slam is okay. But not our strategy. Yeah, I'm skipping. Alright, doesn't matter. Chest. Gonna have a Juzu bracelet. Regular enemy combats are no longer encountered in the question mark rooms. That's, uh, that's, that's okay. Uh, we get more uh, specialized areas and not just cards from these ones. Because I really, usually what you want to do is go uh, to the question mark rooms if you don't want to take a load of cards, which we don't. Alright, elite time. Ooh, painful stabs. It's the book of stabbing. Whenever you take damage from this enemy, he adds a wound to your discard pile. But if we don't take damage, he doesn't. So, obviously, it feels obvious. We want a flame barrier, so we deal 12 to him. And then we can also bash him to vun make him vulnerable. Because we really do need to get through that life toll. It would have been nice to metallicize there. But I don't want those wounds if I can help it. Alright, now we can flex. So we're going to do a lot of stuff here. Uh, vulnerable doesn't stack in a meaningful way for this turn. So do that. Four energy, so we can pretty much play our entire hand. We're going to go Iron Wave for the block. We're going to bash and block, I think. Maintain that vulnerability. Oh, we could deal 12 to him. No, let's let's block. We take seven and get two wounds. One and six. There you go. Thanks to that Tori. But because he dealt damage, we get a strike for each of uh, a wound for each of them. He's dealing 21 in one go. Let's battle trance. Demon form. We can only block 15, and then we can't demon form. I want demon form, though, because we're probably going to get Reaper. And if I stack up my strength, we can gain all of this life back. So if we do that, we can then go Iron Wave, hit him, and also gain a little bit of block. Okay, we are down to 19, though. Oh. oh, boy. We can block five. He's in for 24. We could draw. Yeah. I think it's important we draw here, because I don't want to take that much damage. We can also use the elixir to get rid of the two wounds in our hand for good. Right, well, it's all about blocking here, so iron wave. Defend. We've blocked half of it. 16, 13. Okay. Got him down to 41. He's no longer vulnerable on his next turn, though, so we've got to deal 41 baseline. But we are getting another 3 strength. We're also taking a hell of a lot of a beating. Oh, wow, 6 times 5. Are we going to die? We might die. 
I wouldn't say this is the best run we've ever had, to be honest. Eight strength. Right. Most damage possible is a bash and two strikes, which is enough. Okay, thank Christ for that. Up to 13. We got the kunai. Whenever you play three attacks, gain one dexterity. We're an attacking deck, so that's really good. The strength potion's awesome. And another flame barrier. They are really good. Sure, why not? It's not really the strategy of our deck, but I think we can take it. Let's go to the, the shop. We can remove cards, buy new ones. The Infernal Blade is a cool card. Let's have a look at the trinkets first, though. Centennial Puzzle. The first time you lose HP each combat, draw three cards. Yeah, it's all right. Start of each combat, draw two additional cards. See, so yeah, I'd take that probably over. Start of each combat, add a random colorless card to your hand. These are the colorless cards, so you can see they could be incredibly good or incredibly not that great. Uh, anger. Really do love anger in a strength build. So, anger, deal four damage, and then you create a copy. So, you flood your deck with it. But if you've got, like, your uh, demon form constantly stacking... We're adding four strength to these every single turn, so when the angers come back around, they're dealing like really good strikes for free, which is really good. That being said, we have Velvet Choker, so we can't play more than six cards, so let's not. I'm going to remove a card, because I know we've got Dark Embrace, which we don't like, so I'm going to get rid of it. It's just not playable in our deck. So I'm going to use that service. We've still got a fair bit of these regen potion. I think I'm going to take the regen potion. So we gain 3 HP for 5 turns. Do I want to add any more cards to my deck? I feel like I'm adding too many already. So anything that I add in here has got to be meaningful. And not expensive. Infernal Blade's real good, though. This is a good opportunity, actually. If I get Infernal Blade, it's a good opportunity to show you all of the attacks that you can get into the game as well. So, uh, you can upgrade this to make it free as well, which is really cool. I like Infernal Blade. It's one of my favourite cards for the Ironclad. Alright, I'm going to go to the campfire and we're going to rest, I think. Yes. We're going to rest. If we don't need a rest here, we can upgrade a card, so... We're going to make it to the boss. I'm pretty confident of that. As long as this doesn't destroy us royally. Question mark time. Addicted. As you attempt to sneak past a group of shrouded figures, a naked red-skinned man approaches you. Got any jacks, friend? I got the shakes bad. Please, maybe some coin. He seems delusional, but harmless. He gives us a relic if we give him 85 gold. I am... I am fine with that. We get War Paint, and he upgrades two defense in our deck. For 85 gold. Eh, it's alright. It's alright, I suppose. Oh boy. Right. So. Taking 22 damage. I'm going to regen potion here, because I feel like we're going to be able to make good use of it. On a similar note, I'm probably going to demon form, knowing that we might be able to line up a reaper in a future turn. So it's like demon form, infernal blade, I think. Well, infernal blade first. Reckless charge, gain one vulnerable to deal nine damage. It's not that great. Okay, demon form... And we're taking a lot. But we are set up to gain a lot as well. I don't want to gain the vulnerable because then we'll take a lot more damage. Yeah. Okay. Up to 41, but we take a fair bit back down. It's not great. He gains meaningless life. 
flame barrier. Blocks most of that. We take one from you and then another 12 from you. It's not a very attack heavy hand, but gives us more time to do our demon form charge. I'm going to metallicize and I think I'm going to defend. Okay. And he deals one. Yeah, he takes six. Still no. Still have not got our Reaper. But we're dealing a lot of damage now, which I really like. I'm going to get rid of your plated armor, I think. Or reduce it so that when we get to the time for using it, we're all good. And then hit you. I want to make sure they're both alive. We gain life equal to the life they lost. And I'm pretty sure we're probably going to draw our Reaper here. With plus 8 strength up for the next turn. Oh, weakened. Damn it. We still didn't get it. Oh my god. Well, Flame Barrier again. Cleave. 20 damage. Sure. And we're guaranteed to draw it next turn. But he's adding weakened to our to us, so that's really annoying. Okay, so we wanna We wanna deal as little to you as possible, because it's gonna be lethal, so and deal 13. Yeah, it's 12 there. Let's do that. Reaper. Gain 13 life back. It's not the best. Should have drawn it ages ago. Seeing red, gain 2 energy, exhaust. Eh. Headbutt. Place a card from your discard pile on top of your draw pile. We could headbutt. No, because Reaper exhausts. I was going to say we could chain Reapers, but it's just not going to work. Oh, yeah. Let's skip. And for the sake of making sure that I survive and get to the third floor, I'm just going to heal. Up to 69. Double win. Okay. Second floor boss. Let's go. This is the champ. He's going to defend and buff. We are going to demon form. And because he's not attacking us, we can go for... Ooh, that's another drop kick into our deck. That's pretty good. Might as well use it. And let's add some poison. Yeah, so poison, the way that this works is it's like a reverse factorial, essentially. So the first turn he loses six, then he loses five, then he loses four, then he loses three. All the way until he's got no poison left. It's not going to deal a great deal. Um in terms of his life total, but it gets around block as well, which is really good. Right, I'm going to Battle Trance to look for some good cards. I'm going to Flex. So he's got Metallicize for 5. He always blocks 5. We need to deal 20 before we deal any damage to him, and he's hitting us for 10. I think we can just do some setup turns. So, like, set up Metallicize... Iron Wave to block most of the damage, take most of his shield off as well. We could cleave and then... We could even just defend so we take no damage. Actually, no, we're blocking it all anyway, so let's just strike him. And gain some decks so our blocks are better now. The longer this round goes on, the stronger we become, because our attacks give us better defense, and time gives us better strength. So he's going to hit us for 22. So, that's flame barrier. Block as much as possible. We are vulnerable and weakened, uh, frail. So, he's reducing the stacks that we've got available, but... Uh, let's, let's apply vulnerable to him for the next round. Just in case we draw drop kicks, which are... Yeah, we can still draw. Okay, 
There's a Reaper. He's gonna apply a negative effect to us, which is probably to make us frail and weakened again. So let's just try getting as much damage as possible. And I really don't want to use Reaper this early, because we can wait until like this is the last hit to take him out and we gain as much life as possible. That being said, uh, at the end of this battle we go back to full health, so... We deal 19, gain 19. Nah, we'll wait until it cycles back around again. That might be a mistake, we'll see. You call that a weapon? Oh god. 22 damage. Deck shuffles back in, we get Flame Barrier, which is really nice. I was hoping to see that. It blocks, and we take one. He takes six, so let's do that. Should have probably Battle Tranced first, just to see what we get. Didn't end up mattering. We could Iron Wave, block it all, and he takes six. But I think applying Vulnerable is also really valuable here. If he's going to do it to us, we're going to do it to him. Also, um, Vulnerable doesn't affect Poison in any way. That's guaranteed damage. Alright, so... We can Flex. So we're dealing 15. We can Chain, Drop Kick. So we can deal 23, gain 23. I think that's an acceptable time to do it. Takes us practically to full health. So I really like where we're at now. He's not even going to hit us, so let's just go full on attack mode. And we're at 15 strength. Demon form truly shines on boss fights. That's what I will say about it. Its cost is just a little bit difficult to uh, handle, though. All right, we have no way of applying any vulnerable, so this is just a 23 point strike. 25 damage. All right, well. Hit you. Hit you. Hit you. Hit you. He's at 78. We're almost at full health. So, uh, I'm really... I wasn't confident about our deck, but... I feel like it's got progressively better as time's gone on to a point where... I mean, boss fights just don't seem too difficult for us. We're going to flex. We're up to 23 strength, so every single attack gets an extra 23 power. Some of them attack multiple times, which is what the synergy I was looking for when we started this game off. So, deal 28 damage twice. 33 damage to all enemies, and he's dead. Really easy boss fight there, actually. And we're back to full health, even if we weren't going to get there at the end. Alright, we get 104 gold. And, oh, feed. Feed's pretty good. Brutality. At the start of your turn, lose one HP and draw one card. Um, it's only good if we use Reaper, like, every time. And I don't like the idea of not having control of my life total. Huh. <sighs> but that is a lot of card draw. That's drawing six every single turn, essentially, for free. Feed, on the other hand, deals 10 damage, and if it kills the enemy, we gain permanent max HP buffs. And that 10 damage is going to scale with our um, strength. I'm not so fussed about Bludgeon. It is a very high-powered attack, but if you saw what our strikes and our twin strikes and things like that were doing, 3 power for 32 damage is just not actually that good for us anymore. It's good if we're not running strength builds, I think. So we're going to go with Feed. And we should get ourselves a boss trinket. Ooh, Black Star. Now, Black Star is good if we'd have got it early. Elites drop two relics. So the, the elites that were constantly going through, they'd give us two relics every turn, which means we could get a full board of this. I've had a run where, actually, I've gotten my trinkets all the way up to here because of Black Star. Replaces Burning Blood. At the end of combat, heal 10 HP. So an extra 4 HP with black blood. That's, that's pretty good. I don't know if I want to pick it over card reward screens giving 4 cards instead of 3 though. This is just 
making sure that we get a good card every time. I think we take the question card. Yeah, let's do question card. Alright guys, well that's going to do it for today's episode. Next episode we're going to go to floor 3 and take on the final boss, hopefully, if we make it that far. It's going to uh, it's gonna be a tough one, but we'll see what we can do. I really am enjoying the build that we've got set up here. We've kind of managed to make sure that demon form works. It's really because of the Velvet Choker, I think, that we've managed to do this. I'd love to see more flexes, and I think this feed as well as life gain. We've kind of got this life gain build as well, which is really cool, with Reaper uh, dealing damage to all enemies and healing for each one hit. This one only gives us max HP. Max HP, by the way, um, adds life as well when it adds their max HP. So we're not just going from 85 upwards, we're actually gaining the 85 total life total up as well. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Alright guys, like and subscribe, and if you did enjoy the run as well, then make sure to hit that little bell icon and you'll get the notification when the final floor comes up next round. We will be taking on the final boss. Alright guys, see you later.